Hello guys and welcome back and today I'm continuing my look at mobile phone applications for NAS and we're focusing on the Synology applications. As you can already see from on screen here there is a whole host of apps to choose from and I'm going to be focusing on a bunch of these in different videos in the coming weeks. But today uh, before I start off with anything let's get that disclaimer out of the way that I'm sticking on the top of every video. First and foremost you may immediately see that I'm not using the internet just on the top left there. As per a number of your requests, I'm making sure these videos are network only access because so many of you buy these devices because you don't want to use online storage platforms and you want to rely on network only access. So throughout the course of all these videos, I will only be using network access without internet to show you that everything you see on screen is done via the network only. Of course, if you have the internet enabled, you have worldwide access and other options too. Next, I am using the Android version of all of these applications, although the majority of them are available for both Android and iOS completely for free. And thirdly, I'm using a Synology, the DS620 Slim, and that one, a dual core Intel CPU there, has got a number of features and functionality that aren't available on ARM based NAS. So do bear that in mind that the experience you're going to see today may differ based on the NAS you own. But for today, we're going to go into probably the most useful application that you can get, DS Finder. Now, DS Finder is the NAS management tool application. It pretty much lets you do everything you need to do with a NAS via your mobile phone. It's uh, You can configure, create users, and more. And also, in the very latest version of the application, you can set a NAS up from scratch using this app. Now, I've already done a video on that if you go back to my back catalogue. But for now, let's select the DS620 Slim. As we can see, there's everything from the serial number to the IP, and we can choose to go into this device. It needs my login information, and for those that have watched the other videos, I'm pretty sure you know exactly what this login information is, but we're going to go ahead with that. And remember, we're using network access, so things like HTTPS and verification of the certificate are less necessary. Straight away, you can see lots of information here on screen. Now, I fully populated the device with 500 gig SSDs, and there's six of them in there, but I've created three separate RAIDs, a RAID 1, a RAID 0, and an SHR. This is for a future upcoming video, but that's why you can only see 1.67 terabytes, when really, there's these three different arrays that I've created. But what's cool, straight away, is at one touch, I'm able to now monitor all three of these different arrays that I'm going to be using very soon for my SHR versus RAID videos. Do check those out. Lots of information on the individual drives. If we click one of those drives, we can go in and find out even more information about the individual drives. I've got the serial number of those too. And the same goes for all of these arrays. Let's pick the RAID 0 shall we? And from there, we can see that it's 5% full and how much is used and how much is available. So user management is where we add future users, remove certain users, and we can create whole groups too. So if we go for the plus button there, we'll create a new user. We'll call this user guest2, give them a password. And from here, we can give them individual user groups and more. So we can set things up to be for blanket creation, or we can do individual users one by one. You can even decide whether you want that user to be able to change their password or not. If we click Save, then if they we could have attached an email address for notifications, but for now, the password has been hidden and everything's done. And then we can share this user information as and how we see fit. Quick connect is if you want to access the internet accessibility of your Synology NAS via the internet anywhere in the world. So you need to set up a free Synology Quick Connect account when you set up the device. But as previously mentioned, we're only using network access, not internet. But that's something you can take care of in your own time. If we go cancel and go back, we look at notifications. So you can arrange push notifications from the NAS to come directly to your mobile device, really available from here. And on top of that, you can see if there's new updates available for your device. Now, I've installed a pretty recent update of this device, and because I've disabled the internet, we're not going to be able to check for other updates. But you can manually or automatically install those updates directly from the app. Next, system information. This is where we find out loads of information about our device itself, from the CPU being utilized, the available memory, and more. Network information tells us lots of stuff about the device that we're utilizing, and we can get LAN information, all the different LAN area network and the RJ45, so to speak, connections on this device and what their individual IPs are, and more. 
carrying on, we can look at IP blocking, where we can make sure that certain IPs, that's different users on the network, or indeed the internet, can be blocked to have access to your machine, as well as if there's multiple failed login attempts, can all be configured here from a mobile phone app. Now take a moment and think about that. What that means is, you don't have to be tied to a desktop to protect your network. You don't even really have to be in the same building or the same internet at all as your NAS to shut it down from intrusions if you start getting notifications that someone's trying to break in. And the fact that these options are not only chewable and user-friendly, but on a mobile app is pretty damn impressive. Now, the last thing that's quite cool, before I go into some of the other sub-options, is DSM Mobile. This is a streamlined version of DSM that you would get via the uh, browser user interface, the GUI that DSM 6.2.2 is currently in, and allows you to be able to see all the apps installed on your mobile device, as well as access loads of options that should only be accessible via a desktop in most normal means. You can go to the package center, but of course, because I haven't uh, connected to the internet, I can't see those packages. And on top of that, with the mobile DSM, we can configure even more options than those we've seen before, such as shared folders, if we want to create shared folders on the network and the internet. As you can see there from those shared folders, if we scroll down to them, you can see that I've created three different shared areas for the RAID versus SHR and EXT4 versus BTRFS videos coming up very, very soon. And we can go back straight into DSM Mobile even further, and I'll stop pressing back by accident. There are loads of other options too. Services allow you to um, deactivate or reactivate um, different services on the device to interact with different file platforms. For the people that are using Windows Server or Windows uh, Security, a number of these may be very, very useful indeed, particularly those that want to use NAS to NAS backup over the network or the internet. R-Sync is another cool option there too. Again, Resource Monitor gives us real-time information about our device with regards to the CPU utilization, memory utilization, and more. We can even go a step deeper and look at the individual processes as well as the individual connected users, both as a log and over time. I'll stop pressing back. Next, we can carry on looking at more system information, firmware updates, and IP blocking, and a log that tells us everything that's happened in the device over a given length of time. And that's really what DSM Mobile is about. Now, before we log out and potentially end this video, we can look at some of these other options. Now, the apps here will allow us to download apps from the mobile platform onto our mobile device, nice and straightforward and easily. Let's get rid of that. And on top of that, finally, we can look at the option here, which is more to do with configuration of the app itself. So within this app itself, we can see the ability to do add other NAS devices and connected devices to that local area network, configure passcodes that not any old Tom, Dick or Harry can access the NAS, and you can create a four digit passcode just for the mobile app to stop someone who has your phone having ultimate control of your NAS. The Synology account, of course, is what we would have set up earlier wrong with quick connect and there's still options for help and contacting support at Synology themselves and again that's about it for this app now I've been very positive about this app which I, let's be honest if this is going to be some kind of real review then we have to look at the positives and the negatives well I'll be honest I'm not finding a lot of negatives this does everything it's supposed to do. I feel like I've got a good degree of control over my NAS. It is very user-friendly. Everything is very clear, and options were found where I would like to find them. If I was accessing this over the internet, maybe it wouldn't have been as quick as it's been, but it has to be said, it is a tremendously fast-acting uh, app for my Android device. I can only speak for the Android device, but I imagine the uh, iOS version is just as good. If I had to come across any negatives here, I would say that the system resources option isn't fantastic. That's probably the only area where I'm finding this app sadly lacking. Once we go to this, the resource monitor, it doesn't give me loads of information. Now, I know Synology have a reputation for keeping it simple for you guys, and a lot of people will prefer a resource monitor like this. But me personally, I want my resource monitor to have a lot more gut and I want to break down information a hell of a lot more than what I'm seeing here. But I know for as far as Synology users are concerned, I'm very much in the minority there. And there is individual information about processes and more, but 
I do find that there isn't quite enough system information being thrown at me here. But with the exception of that, I can't fault this app. It's probably the best NAS management app out there for any of the big brands. And therefore, if you're using a Synology NAS, whether you're going to use your mobile phone or not, it seems madness to me to not at least have this app installed as another layer of access to your device if and when you need it. Just make sure you use a good password and maybe give it a separate login so it doesn't, if you're not going to use it much, at least then it becomes just a third tier of access. But otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And of course, we're looking at more mobile apps over time, and we'll be looking at further applications after this, such as Drive, Moments, Audio, and more. But I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, I found it helpful. Don't forget to click like and subscribe, and click the bell for further notifications. Finally, if you do have any recommendations or requests for further mobile apps, do let me know. This is an ever-evolving subject, and I'd love to stay on top of it. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Cheerio, and I'll see you next time.